Don't take advice from some asshole on the radio. Wait, what, Ronnie B? Number one thing, oh. don't take advice from some asshole on the radio. All right, Calvin has been on hold not only for 47 minutes, but he called at the beginning of the last show, oh, so it's damn. like an hour and 47 minutes, and then he gave up the ghost and called back. Calvin, area code 408, you're on Weird Medicine. Oh, now what? Oh, no. Now what? Hang on. Um... Oh, well, no, it says... Oh, okay, resume call. Okay, hey, Calvin, are you there? Calvin! Calvin. Hello. It says I'm in the host room. Come on, Calvin. Stay with us, baby. Stay with us. Hang on, we'll edit this part out, too. I'm going to call it back. Let's see what happens. Thank you for calling Call-In Studios... Yo, Calvin. You are six digit pin number. Welcome, Dr. Steve. You is now in the host room and can manage your funky callers from the call in studio web interface. <laughs> Laws you is a mess, that faux show. Call in studio has a real sense of humor. Okay, Calvin, are you there? Yes. Can okay. You hear me? Sorry about that. I guess when we took the yeah. Skype call from those other guys, it knocked out uh, Call In Studio, our call screening software. Which, by the way, if you want to do a podcast, oh, go to right. callinstudio.com, and uh, it's beautiful call screening software. It's very similar to the mechanism that we used on uh, uh, Weird Medicine when we were in the Opie and Anthony studio. Anyway, Calvin, what can we do for you? Um. Okay. So uh, let's see. Um, okay, so I've learned through uh, through nursing and doctoring that um, a lot of our advancements in medicine come from things that happened through wartime, like especially if you look up the history of the ambulance, it, um, a lot of the advancements in our technology come from things from war. Um, <clears throat> so my question was, uh, during World War II, you had the, uh, the Nazi experiments, and all of those are obviously very unethical and very uh, morally wrong, and they're horrific. Sure, they were done without was, people's was consent. There actually, and... yeah. yeah, was there actually something that we learned uh, from those experiments? Because obviously they'll never be repeated again, hopefully. Um, was there anything we actually learned from those experiments, or was it just torture? Was there anything that uh, we, any scientific knowledge we gained, or anything that they actually teach, in, or anything that you've come across in your practice? That, um, um, has been helpful as a result of those horrible experiments. Yeah, I am not aware of anything. Um, I'm looking at a, uh, and I, I look, I can't speak to the provenance of this, of uh, this website, but it's um, all that's interesting. dot com. You know, watch this is some, you know, <laughs> some nationalist website or something. That'd be like the Onion. Yeah, but it says, did Nazi research actually contribute anything valuable to medical science? And it was obviously brutal and yeah. in, inhumane. And um, yeah. I'm just looking to see if there was anything whatsoever that we learned from it. Otherwise, other than how about medical ethics? You know, don't uh, do yeah. things against people's will. And, uh, you know, some of the stuff that I heard about just really just did, seemed like torture rather than actual medical experimentation. Now, well, you, yeah. you bring up an interesting uh, an interesting. Um, Point though that we there are certain things we can't do um, in medical research, and it makes it very difficult to know things. And one of those is, uh, let's say, um, pain medicine at end of life. If you have someone that's a hospice patient who is suffering greatly, you don't want to do a double-blind placebo-controlled study on them uh, for some for some um, uh, new medication because it's unethical. The fact is that they uh, have a very short time to live, and um, they, um, you know, it would not be ethical for us to give them a placebo when they're having a physical or existential suffering just to advance medical knowledge. So in those situations, we do observational studies and just hope for the best. And we all know from listening to this show that observational studies suck, uh, but there are times when that's the best we can do. 
you know, if we're going to yeah. try to determine whether what Dr. Scott does uh, actually has a, a true medical effect, it's, you know, it's nearly impossible to do a double-blind, placebo-controlled study on something like acupuncture because how are you going to do it? You know what's the what's the what's the blinded part? Well, we the patient knows whether you're sticking a needle in them, and the pro- provider knows that either they're sticking it where they're supposed to or not. So then they'll do this thing called sham acupuncture, where you get somebody that doesn't know what the hell they're doing just sticking needles anywhere. Well, maybe that has an effect though. Sure. You know, and who knows? Who's yeah. to say that the meridians that the acupuncturists came up with four thousand years ago? Or the be-all and end-all to where you should be sticking a damn needle. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, the, this right. person may get a, the sham person may get an effect because yeah. they've discovered a meridian right. that, you Got know, lucky. the acupuncturist didn't know about. Right. So uh, some of this, so I, I, I have no idea. I, I'm going to say yeah. no just because we, nothing that the Nazis did were good, was good. But... Um, uh, right. I, I'm willing to be educated on that if there's something that we're using that you know that they that they used but that they came up with. But um, uh, I think the more interesting thing is just the ethics of medical experimentation. And when you operate in an ethical way, there are things that we can't do, you know, and that we'll never right. know because they are truly unethical. So. Yeah, and part of Dr. Gray's anatomy book, um, he took uh, as, as far as I know, he took survivors from war while they're still alive and because of bombs and things they were splayed open and he was able to see how some of the internal organs work um, from yeah. what I remember mm-hmm. yeah um, well and you know yeah yeah and that's the that's the inherent problem with placebo as well because you have to tell somebody what you're injecting them with and if you tell them oh this is just you know sugar water or sugar pill or something then uh, then it doesn't work because well, then the, the thing that's with placebo right. is a psychosomatic effect well, and they can do um, placebo-controlled trials ethically as long as the patient is aware that they could be getting one or the other and they agree to it. And as long as you give them informed yeah. consent that you may be getting a, a, a placebo. That's why I always like crossover trials. In a crossover trial, you'll go you know, a month where one group is getting the placebo and the other group is getting the active drug. And then uh, after that month or whatever time period you've designed, you cross over and everyone that's getting the one gets the other. And that way, at least those people are getting something. My mother-in-law, everybody knows Big Joe who listens to this show, which we're getting ready to do a Big Joe thing coming up (laughs) soon. Um, No, it's actually Ask a Country Hick. We're going to bring that back up again. Hang on. Let me me play her theme music. Ask a country hick. Ask a country hick. Okay, well, anyway, uh, so we'll be doing Ask a Country Hick again. And people who have listened long enough recognize that that used to be the Ask a Prostitute mm-hmm. uh, theme music, and we had to stop doing that segment. <laughs> but I didn't want to get rid of the yeah. uh, all the work I did on making that theme music, so we repurposed it for Big Joe. But, um, uh, well, but anyway, my, as long my, as she brings you some retardo cheese to snack on. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, if uh, Big Joe was in a trial where uh, she has rheumatoid arthritis and they were doing a clinical trial and she was guaranteed to get yeah. the drug for at least part of the time and then when it was over, they were guaranteed, everyone in the trial was guaranteed to get the drug for a period of time for free. Mm-hmm. I like those kind of placebo-controlled trials because you get the same information, and everybody, if it's some new and incredible thing, everybody gets the drug at some point. So, but anyway, so I'm deflecting because I don't really don't want to yeah. uh, dwell too much on the good things that Nazis may or may not have done in their horrendous uh, unethical yeah. med- uh, clinical trials, if you can even call them that. But I, I, I do think that the, the question of ethical uh, medical um, uh, medical research is a is something that's interesting to talk about. Yep. Anyway, cool man. Uh, you appear. You got anything to plug? You still doing comedy? Um, yeah, I'm still doing that, and um, just uh, follow my stuff on uh, Twitter and Facebook. Both Calvin Haha ha Comedy. If you're interested to see uh, what my next shows or whatever. Okay. Are, so. Check them out. Anyways. Thanks yep. for calling, man. Thanks for your support. Yeah, thanks.
Yeah, no worries. Okay. Um, take care. Have a good day. Okay, talk to you soon. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Whoops. There we go. Yeah, thanks, Calvin, for calling and trying to get me to say something good about uh, the third Reich <laughs> Jesus in 2019. I'm not doing it. All right. Um, uh, area code 910, you're on Weird Medicine. What's up? Dr. Steve, it's Logan Field. Hey, hey, John, how are you? Hey, buddy, what's up? Were you listening earlier? Did you hear the uh, new Gecko, uh, well, not Gecko, but the Phonic Bloom uh, uh, 